This book is called The Greedy Triangle. It was written by Marilyn Burns, and the illustrations were done by Gordon Silveria. Marilyn Burns, for a long time, has been one of the leading proponents of making math fun for children to learn at all ages. She has a website that's easy to find, mathsolutions.com. It's full of activities and ways of learning math at home and in school. And um, she is beloved by many, many people uh, who recognize how important mathematics is. Writing her book, The Greedy Triangle, uh, gave her a chance to work with an artist, Gordon Silveria. Once there was a triangle that was, as most triangles are, always busy. The triangle spent its time holding up roofs, supporting bridges, making music in symphony orchestras, creating the wind for sailboats, being slices of pie, and halves of sandwiches, and much, much more. The triangle's favorite thing, however, was to slip into place when people put their hands on their hips. That way, I always hear the latest news, it said, which I can tell my friends. The triangle's friends liked hearing the news. One day, the triangle began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the triangle went to see the local shapeshifter. How may I help you? The shapeshifter asked the triangle. I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the triangle, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof! The shapeshifter turned the triangle into a quadrilateral. This had been the triangle. It had three sides before, but now it had four sides. One, two, three, four. And before it had one, two, three angles, now it had four. Life changed in a wonderful way. The quadrilateral was happy with all the new things it could do. The quadrilateral could be a baseball diamond, or first, second, or third base. It could take a position on a checkerboard or chessboard. It could be a television screen, a computer screen, or a movie screen. It could frame windows or frame pictures and much, much more. The quadrilateral's favorite thing, however, very favorite thing, was to be the pages of a book. I learned so many interesting stories that way, it said, which I can tell my friends. The pages in a book are quadrilateral because each page has four sides and four angles. The quadrilateral's friends liked hearing the stories. But one day the quadrilateral began to feel dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the quadrilateral went back to the shapeshifter. How may I help you now? The shapeshifter asked the quadrilateral. I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the quadrilateral, my life would be more interesting. That's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof! 
the shapeshifter turned the quadrilateral, which had had four sides, one, two, three, four, into a pentagon, which has one, two, three, four, five sides, and one, two, three, four, five angles. Life changed in a wonderful way. The Pentagon was happy with all the new things it could do. On a baseball diamond, the Pentagon could be home plate. The plate on a baseball or softball field has five sides. It could be a section on a soccer ball. The black squares on this soccer ball are all pentagons, five-sided shapes. Or it could appear inside whenever someone drew a five-pointed star. So drawing a five-pointed star goes like this. And what that leaves on the inside is one, two, three, four, five sides of a shape called a pentagon. The Pentagon's favorite thing, however, was to be the headquarters of the United States military near Washington, D.C. I hear all the top secrets that way, it said. It's too bad I can't tell them to my friends. The Pentagon's friends couldn't help feeling a bit left out. And here is that building near Washington, D.C., with its five sides. Because of its five sides, the building is called the Pentagon. After a while, time seemed to pass slowly for the Pentagon, and it became dissatisfied. I'm tired of doing the same old things, it grumbled. There must be more to life. So the Pentagon went back to the shapeshifter. So, you're here again, the shapeshifter said to the Pentagon. Now what would you like? I think if I had just one more side and one more angle, said the Pentagon, my life would be more interesting. Oh, that's easy to do, said the shapeshifter. Poof, the shapeshifter turned the Pentagon, which had its five sides, three, four, five, into a hexagon, which had one, two, three, four, five, six sides, and one, two, three, four, five, six angles. So from five sides and five angles, the shape shifting resulted in a hexagon of six sides and six angles. Life changed again in a wonderful way. The hexagon was happy with all the new things it could do. The hexagon fit in as floor tiles in houses and patios and fancy crackers at parties and picnics. It worked as the socket of certain bolts and the prongs of certain wrenches. The hexagon's favorite thing, however, was to be a cell in a beehive. I love watching the bees as they buzz in and out, it said. The hexagon spent so much time in the beehive, it was too busy to talk to its friends. The friends missed the hexagon and couldn't help feeling ignored. Again and again, the shape became restless dissatisfied, and unhappy with its life. Again and again, it returned to the shapeshifter for more sides and more angles. The shapeshifter agreed to turn it into one shape after another. A heptagon with seven sides. An octagon with eight sides. A nonagon with nine sides. A decagon with ten sides. And on and on. Finally, the shape had many, many sides. 
and many, many angles. Its sides were so small that it had trouble keeping its balance. Its friends couldn't tell which side it was on and began to avoid the shape. One day, when the shape was going down a hill, it began to roll. Faster and faster it went, screeching around corners, crashing into fences and trees, colliding with bicycles and terrifying walkers. At last, the shape came to a stop. It felt tired and dizzy, lonely, and sad. Enough, thought the shape. I don't know which side is up. I can't keep my balance. My friends don't want me around. The shape could no longer remember why it had been so unhappy as a triangle. Very carefully, it made its way back to the shapeshifter. Aren't you happy yet? The shapeshifter asked. I want to be a triangle again, said the shape. <laughs> I'm not surprised, said the shapeshifter. Poof! The shapeshifter turned the shape back into a triangle. The triangle was delighted to have its old shape back again and kept itself very busy. Once again, it held up roofs, supported bridges, made music in a symphony orchestra, caught the wind for sailboats, became slices of pie and halves of sandwiches, and much, much more. Still, the triangle's favorite thing to do was to slip into place when people put their hands on their hips. That way, I always hear the latest news, it said, which I can tell my friends. Its friends liked hearing the news and were glad the triangle was back in shape again. The end. Although at the end of this book, Marilyn Burns has a big section for parents, teachers, and other adults you can read what she has to say about mathematics and some of the best ways to learn mathematics and especially the geometry behind this lesson on shapes, how triangles are related to circles and all the shapes in between. On this page, after explaining that a circle is not a polygon, Marilyn Burns offers a lot of other information that you can use with a big brother or sister or a grown-up in the house to kind of Follow up on this lesson and learn even more. If you enjoyed the drawings and the illustrations, Gordon Silveria has his own webpage. There's the address for it. And he is a sculptor and he's done lots of other art for grown-ups. And he's working on a book for children called Happy Monkey, Grumpy Monkey. It hasn't been published yet, but here's a sneak preview of what it's going to look like. This very fun book about shapes and sides and angles has been The Greedy Triangle, written by Marilyn Burns and illustrated by Gordon Silveria.